$826. The car was listed like an hour ago. We got a listing for 15 days that covers the whole trip. It's for tomorrow. $826. I don't think you understand. Here. Yo, you recording me, yo? I'm the Bamboo Project Podcast starts in three, two. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast. I decided I'm going to help create 1,000 millionaires, including myself, and not by being a guru or selling a course, but by doing the things I already love to do every day and documenting the journey to get there. I figure I'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to. My name is Donovan Gray, and this is how I will turn my life into a living. So first, I'd like to start off by giving a shout out to all the people rocking with us and supporting the channel. We really appreciate you. We are currently streaming on all major streaming platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, you name it, we on it, and if we not on it, we about to be on it. For everyone listening to this podcast and not watching it, you can find us on YouTube at The Bamboo Project. We have over 380 videos on our channel. You want to learn real estate? We got that. You want cooking tutorials inspired by Dr. Sabi? We got that. You want travel and lifestyle vlogs? Got it. You want makeup and hair growth tutorials? Got it. You want basketball? Got it's everything us. We made different playlists for all the things we're into and you can find all of those links in the description box below. All the parts of our journey that don't make it to YouTube will be on our story and you can find me on Instagram at Donovan Gray. D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y and my phenomenal, beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne. A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. This may be your first time here, and if it is, welcome to the family. But for everyone else, this is chapter two, page 83 of this story. Now, this podcast has four different segments. We have the life update, we have episode playback, we have Donovan's questions, and we have the topics of the day. All video and audio timestamps will be in the description box below. Today's date is October 19th and it is currently 1.45 p.m. So before I get to the topics of the day, which I, which is our first segment, I want to start off with my screen addiction, all right? So this week, let me get my screen recording going first. Okay, boom. Now, normally what I've been doing is I will actually um, talk about my last three days on my screen. And I actually think it would be more important to talk about the last week. So that would mean from the last podcast to this podcast. So... All right, so last podcast, I was, that was Tuesday. I was on my phone for six hours and 29 minutes that day. And then Wednesday, I was on my phone for six hours and 28 minutes. Thursday, I was on my phone for seven hours and 41 minutes. Friday, October 15th, I was on my phone for eight hours and 24 minutes. And then Saturday, I was on my phone for six hours and 44 minutes. Now, let's see, what was I on the most? Safari was the most at nine hours and 48 minutes for the whole last week. And then coming in at number two was YouTube at nine hours and 12 minutes for the last week. And then my third app for last week was seven hours and 28 minutes, which was Instagram. My average pickups per day, which is crazy is 115 times. That means I picked up my phone on average 115 times a day. That's an addiction, if I've ever seen one. Um, so what's the average for last week? Average what? The average. Um, seven hours and nine minutes. Okay, Melissa, what do you have for your screen addiction? Screen, why do you think I have? Uh, that's what it's called, screen addiction. We all have screen addiction. We should be on our phone for an hour. Like I said, it seems like I did what I did last time. Mm-hmm. Or, or was that last week? Yeah, I, it seems like I fell asleep with my phone mm -hmm. on TikTok again. Mm -hmm. But either way, I'm starting to think Melissa's making up, uh, making no, up these it tells things. You the times. 
Mm-hmm. She'd be on her phone for six hours at night when I'm sleeping. That's what she's trying to hide. Okay. We're, we're listening. So, uh, my, okay, Sunday, I was on my phone for three hours and 28 minutes. Uh, one of, okay. Monday, I was on my phone for five hours and 51 minutes. Tuesday, six hours. Wednesday, four hours and 13 minutes. Thursday, seven hours and 36 minutes. And four of those hours were like uh, Waze and Google Maps. Uh, Friday, five hours and 43 minutes. And then Saturday, I was on my phone for nine hours and 15 minutes. On Saturday? But an hour and a half was um, Google Maps and an hour, uh, almost two hours was TikTok, but I think I fell asleep with my phone on TikTok. But either way, so my average for last week is six hours. Mm-hmm. My most used app is TikTok for nine hours mm-hmm. for the week. Uh, Google Maps is second, and then Safari is third. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Oh, and I had 143 pickups last week. That's your average? That's that's how much pickups I have for the week. Oh, yeah, for the average, yeah, 143. I had a total of 1,001 pickups for the week. That's interesting that you had 143 on average. That's interesting. I wonder why you pick your phone up. It says Gmail. That's, that's what I do when I'm idle. I, de- I definitely check my email when I'm idle. Because, I, okay, my most pickups was 142, and my total was 808 pickups f- for the whole week. What's your first used app after pickup? Gmail. Gmail, okay. Mine is Safari. Yeah, app, Gmail, then Safari, then Messages, then Instagram. So if I had to guess for me, I would say that I'm either Googling something or going on Twitter. That's my Safari because I don't have the app. Now, what I want to ask you is... Are you okay with your screen time? And if not, what would you want it to be at? Um, I'm okay with my screen time because out of all the apps that are up here for my most used apps, only two are social media apps, two out of six. So one is TikTok and then the other is Instagram. I don't know if you count your messages as social media. So it's just like... I think that throughout my day, I do a lot. Mm-hmm. And if I want to kind of chill out and be on my phone, I just kind of want to chill out and be on my phone. Um, that's just kind of how I feel, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also, I guess because of the things that I'm kind of create, the way that I see it, like I see helpful stuff on TikTok, like business stuff and just things that are inspiring. So I, I don't see it as something negative for me. Hmm, it's interesting. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right. So. What? What? I mean, you don't feel like it's this. Um, okay. Do you disagree or like? What do you think? I think that being on the phone for more than three hours a day, I would say the most is four, is a lot. Mm-hmm. Because I think that. There are so many things that we can be doing or that can be done in that time period instead of using my phone. And I don't think that. I don't think a fourth of my day should be on my phone or a third of my day should be looking at my cell phone. Because if you do that, let's see, if you if you were to do that, I'm, for the whole year, if I did, let's say my average screen time is seven hours a day times 365, that means I spent 2,500 hours on my phone. And if I did what, divide that by 24, that's 106 days on my phone. So that's almost a third of the year is on my phone. That's the third of the year I'm spending on my phone. That seems crazy to me. That means that that's how many months is that? That's three, six, nine. That's almost almost four months. I'm spending like this out of the year. I have twelve months and four of them on my phone. Think about how crazy that sounds. And how did you get that math? I spend an average on I spend an average of seven hours a day on my phone. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like I said, I don't know. It's just kind of weird because the way that I see it, I set my day up in in a way that I try to put on my screen time to like, I mean, on my like social media time towards the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So towards the, I already did what I had to do for today. I'm not really trying to do anything after this time kind of thing. That's when I try to put in my social media. Mm-hmm. So that's why it feels a bit different to me, but I do understand what you're saying. Oh, uh, you say it feels different. What do you mean it feels different? Because I try to I try to do it in a way where, like, I won't have my phone near me. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen me, like, just throw my phone on the bed or something like that when I'm trying to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, I do that on purpose so that I can get whatever it is that I'm doing done and um, not think about my phone too much. Like, I'll let it die. I put it on do not disturb. Like, I try to keep my phone kind of out of my sight mm-hmm. so that... Throughout the day, I feel productive. I feel like I did what I had to do today. And for me personally, because my anxiety does stem from, like, feeling I have a lot of things to do, I think that it kind of helps me to just rein it in and just try to relax. Okay, so you said your average speeding time is six hours, right? Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that sounds like a lot. If your goal is to not be on your phone and you're spending... A fourth of your day on the phone. Like I said, I mean, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Cause, like, it says that I'm on it, but all of these apps that that it's on is not active apps for me to be on. You get what I'm saying? I feel like my phone be sitting there and the apps are open. And it counts that as me being on my phone. Mm, maybe. I mean, you be scrolling through your Gmail, checking your mail. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can be on TikTok, um, YouTube. I think I'm in denial. I think so. I think you are in denial that you are on your phone for six hours a day. Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds crazy. I'm like, I don't think that that's true. And I think that's the whole reason why I bring it up because even for me, I don't feel like I'll be on my phone for 10 hours in a day. Like, you couldn't tell me, like, yeah, Don, if you were on, for, on your phone for 10 hours yesterday. I don't know. I feel like I'll be seeing it. <laughs> 10 hours is, the, is half the day. I mean, yeah, sure. But like I said, for me, I don't feel like that. And there's another thing, too, because we use our phone for work. So that's just... It, it is what it is. So, like I said, for me, it's, it's weird. This is the whole thing why I bring it up. is because... If I'm spending that much time on my phone, imagine if I had, we all ask for more time. If we have four extra months or three extra months, people ask for more time. Us? People. Oh, okay. And it's like, we have an extra three months of out of the year. Because think about this other, on the other part of that. Eight hours or around eight hours is spent sleeping. Not me. Not I mean, me. how many hours you sleep? Me? Five. Probably, yeah. Okay, so that's five hours. That's about a third of the of the year anyways. So right there, you have two-thirds of the year, you on your phone or sleeping. So now you only have one-third of the year left. You got four months out of the year left to get all your dreams that you want done. You got four months now. And when I look at it like that, I go, dag, am I really optimizing my time if I'm spending Four months. Imagine for the first four months of the year, you just sat on your phone. And you said that you're going to get it down to three. Uh, I think three hours is a is a manageable amount. It's like a to me, respectable amount. Mm. Do you have any timers on Instagram? Not on Safari or Twitter. Um. Mm, nah, I don't. I mean, I, I don't, but I don't think I'll be on them as much. But I won't know until I put a timer on. But I don't mean. To, let me see. I don't really be. My timer is two hours. How long is your timer? Do you have, if you have any, an hour? So see, my timers are two hours. Nah, one hour. Um, that's why I don't. Instagram is barely. I think because I have my hour timer, like I only use. I've only been on Instagram for my daily average for Instagram is thirty four minutes. Um, let me see. So like, I still have the timer on. It doesn't even show up anymore. I like, I don't see it. Mm. 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 An hour. Who was it? Yesterday. 
Yesterday I was on my phone for 11 hours. Did we go outside yesterday? You weren't here yesterday. Yeah, I was on my phone for 11 hours. Instagram for two hours and four minutes. YouTube for an hour and a half. Twitter, an hour and a half. So it tells me how long I'll be on Twitter. Twitter, an hour and a half. Safari, two hours and 22 minutes. I think it's so funny. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yesterday I was on my phone for five hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, yesterday was more games and, uh, like, TikTok and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I think that's because I was on the train and stuff. So. Yeah, 11 hours on my phone yesterday. 10 hours and 56 minutes. And two, That's yeah, a lot. it is a lot. Turo, an hour, basically, which is crazy to me. Chase, an hour. I was probably doing my finances, but still. Um, Twitter, hour and a half. YouTube, hour and a half. Instagram, two hours. Safari, two, almost two and a half hours. So, but I mean, like I said, yesterday I didn't really do much. I did edit the video for Turo, but I feel like there are days where I'll, I'll do a bunch of stuff. And still have seven hours on my phone. So I'm like, did I really do a lot of stuff? Or did I just do things that... Or did I just not optimize my time for the day properly? Because I'll have a list of 12 things. Do, do nine of them. And then be like, alright, I got seven hours on my phone today. That's crazy. What you all have been waiting for is the Turo update. We have been trying to increase our income over the last several weeks and if you have been updated with the podcast then you will know that about a month ago we actually had our unemployment ended and we were trying to figure out what we were going to do so one of those things we came up with was to list the car on Turo now we ended up buying the car on the 28th of this of last month of September and we had our own situation with that. Several things that happened was the car that we first originally bought, Carvana crashed it. So we had to buy another car. And we finally got the car. Now, since we've had the car for about two weeks, right? We have amassed about five to seven tickets, somewhere in that range. We have about three tickets for improper display of license plates because when we got the car we did not have a license plate on it and we put it in the window shield as we in the dashboard as we thought we could until we got the proper uh casing for the license plate but that did not stop us from getting three tickets then we got two parking tickets so right now we are probably at about 500 600 dollars in tickets now Carvana said they would pay for the tickets. We have not sent it to them yet, but hopefully we can get that uh, removed. And there's also some other tickets. What was the other tickets for? Mm -hmm. Huh? Because one ticket was one hundred and fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. But there was two that was sixty dollars also. I think those are just like meter parking or something like that so as you can see we got a lot of tickets over the in our first two weeks of having a car so getting a car already came with a lot of expenses not only did we have parking tickets we also had to get insurance and we went through about four or five insurances before we finally got to an insurance that was affordable for us and covered what we needed for Turo insurance was ranging between up to upwards of a thousand dollars originally uh somebody quoted us for four something we got some people quoted us for three we got it down to about 250 to 280 so between that and the car note the car note's about 570 let's say 600 dollars plus that insurance would put us around 900 dollars. i like to just say a thousand but you know depending on who really wants to keep track of the numbers our goal for the car was to cover the expenses that we have for the car itself which would be the insurance which would be let's say gas and let's say the car note that would be around a thousand dollars that was our goal when we first bought the car now we figured we could list the car for about $80 to $100 a day because there's a person in the area that's renting the same car for $150, $125. So we said, okay, if we can come in lower than that. We should be comfortable enough to get some rides. 
especially if we can market it properly and get some good pictures. So before we were able to actually get the car online, we found out that we can get commercial insurance for the car. Now, here's something that I didn't know and I had to learn throughout this process. Commercial insurance and com being a commercial host are two different things. I was under the impression that once you get commercial insurance, you have to now become a commercial host. And that actually pushed us back in terms of time and um, I wouldn't necessarily say money, but mostly just time because I was trying to figure out how to get commercial insurance. With Turo, if you want to get commercial insurance, if you want to become a commercial host, you need a special kind of insurance, a special kind of commercial insurance. Your insurance needs to cover the person driving the car as if I was a car rental company, right? So everybody I called said that we don't provide that. And when I finally did find a commercial insurance company that would then insure the car, they said, yeah, we will cover the car for Toro, but we won't cover if the person, once the car is being rented. That was crazy to me because I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, what's the point of having insurance if you won't cover if the person gets into an accident? So we went back and forth for a long time. So then I finally get in touch with Toro and they say that for me, for me to become a commercial host, I would have to put them on my insurance that says that they are not liable if somebody gets into an accident. So now I'm confused because I'm thinking, wait, what is, why would you not be liable? Isn't that the whole purpose of people having insurance through Turo or me having one of the plans through Turo? That's what I was thinking. But after I talked to my insurance company, they kind of explained it to me and they said that I honestly shouldn't do that. That's what they told me. The more I looked into it is when I realized there is a distinction between commercial host and commercial insurance. So I can have commercial insurance and still be a regular host on the platform, which is what I currently am now. So our insurance went from $280 to $67 and they cover the car whenever it's not being rented. So our car knows about 540 and our insurance is about $67. So right now we're looking at about six and some change. So we finally got our pictures taken for the car and we got the listing made. I actually deleted the listing multiple times because we kept running into issues being a commercial host. We kept running into issues with um, trying to change the email address and the name because I wanted to be the bamboo project, things like that. So another couple of days went by for us to get the actual, for us to get the car listed on the app. So now we're excited. We're like, okay, the car is ready to go. The car, we, we finally in the house. We're excited. The car is, the pictures are taken. They're edited nice. The, the listing is, is, is written well. I tried to use some copy writing style in the listing. I tried to be uh, personable in the listing because I want the person looking at the car to go, oh, this is a very interesting listing. I like this. I uh, found the prices that I think would work for different extras on the car. Now, we listed the car on Saturday, so that would be about three days ago. And Melissa and I were in the car, right, after we listed it, because I'm always very skeptical, which is very funny to me because I feel like Melissa thinks I'm not skeptical, but I'm very skeptical. She asked me, when do I think the car would be listed on the site? Not that's not the right question. She asked me, when do I think somebody would rent the car from us? And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to really be overzealous or overly optimistic. So what do I think is an average time that somebody would rent our car. And I'm thinking, OK, I think within the week, I think I give it about seven days. Somebody should we should get a, a booking on the car. And Melissa said she thinks it should be about three days. I'm like, OK, that's, a, you know, it's kind of short, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. So we were running some errands that day. After the car was listed, we decided to go to uh, Dollar Tree to buy some products because Melissa is starting a candle company and we she wanted to get some pictures for it. So she was buying props for the, for the photo shoot. So we're in the car about to go inside and I don't know what made me check my phone. I don't know why I decided I was going to look at my phone. 
we had got a booking seven minutes ago on Turo. And I couldn't believe it. We listed the car about an hour, hour and a half before that time. And we already got booked. So I just saw the notification. I didn't really know what it, I knew it said like you have a trip or something like that. But I did not know exactly any details about the trip itself. So I, look, I get my phone. I look at it, I'm reading. I'm just like, yo, we got booked. This is crazy. I put the uh, video after this of my reaction because I was so excited. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> Eight hundred and twenty six dollars. The car was listed like an hour ago. We got a listing for 15 days that covers the whole trip. It's for tomorrow. Eight hundred and twenty six dollars. I don't think you understand. And the reason I get excited with things like this is because I know how hard I work for these kind of things. And it was very similar with the Airbnb situation where I'm like, OK, we finally got to the next step. Like, OK, we're actually making money. Now it comes down to how to run the business, because what I've learned so far in starting multiple businesses that have not taken off is that there are a lot of small, annoying, in my opinion, insignificant tasks and things that have to be done for you to get the business from zero to one. And it's it's stupid things like going to a bank that allows you to put that allows you to have a business checking account we got denied before not me and melissa but uh one of my old friends uh it's trying to find the right person to be able to print your clothing it's trying to get a, a, the account set up and then on top of all of those things it's having the money to do all of the administrative work for starting the business before you even get it off the ground so now you got to buy labels you have to buy uh props you have to buy uh, t-shirt tag, just things that don't make you any money. So before you even sell your first t-shirt, your first uh, item of food, your first candle, you already spent hundreds of dollars, right? And then you have to do the testing. So there's a lot of things that go into it. So I always get excited when we go, okay, now I can finally do the thing that everybody in their mind thinks of when they start a business. Everybody that wants to start a business thinks, okay, I'm gonna market it like this. I wanna try to have a brand built like this. I wanna hire this kind of person. I wanna you know, have my store in that location. And that's what I finally felt that we were doing with the Airbnb and then it got snatched right out of my hands, right? So now, Turo, we got everything done. Just paid all the expenses we had to pay. We get the booking and this lady has booked a trip for two weeks, okay? She booked the car for the last two weeks of the month that's 15 days we get the car back on the 31st she booked it for the following day which would be sunday so on the notification it says how much money we made so we made on our first trip in the first two hours 862 dollars after the car was listed for an hour and a half so i'm excited because i'm like okay it works the method works now we can duplicate it and we can kind of do the, call it scientific method. We can try to change variables. We can change the price a little bit. She actually also booked one of the extras, which I was very proud of, because I'm like, okay, she wanted an extra, that's great. I don't know how many people book extras, but the fact that she did means to me that something she read made her go, hmm, I wanna get that. So the entire trip was actually $1,200. That's how much on try the entire trip, maybe like twelve seventy five, and we got the eight hundred. So I'm looking at myself like, Dad, if this car was listed at a hundred dollars, that means in the first day or two we could have just made like over a thousand dollars on this trip. That we would have made a thousand dollars in the first hour. So we are in the car. I'm I'm going crazy. I'm just like, Yo, this is insane. I can't believe we did. Like this is crazy. So we go inside Dollar Tree, right? And now I'm trying to figure out, okay, what we gotta do? We gotta get a lockbox set up because we were not actually planning for her to anybody to book the car that day and then need it for the next day. So we still cut a couple of things to get for the car. One of those things was a lockbox. I actually bought a lockbox the day before and it was supposed to come in the mail on Sunday, but obviously I did not plan for this lady to book the car. So after Melissa and I buy the uh stuff from from some Dollar Tree, we buy some snacks for the for the trip for her, we buy some amenities because we feel like we wanted to have a nice experience in the car. Across the street from Dollar Tree is Home Depot. So I wanted to go inside Home Depot to buy a lockbox because I did not know when the one from the day 
from the from that day that I bought would come in the following day. So we crossed the street to go and get the lockbox. So we're in there trying to find one. We're asking people for for help for directions. We're looking at lockboxes. We finally find one that we think would probably be a good lockbox. So like, okay, boom, now we're excited, we're ready to go. We're like, okay, we're about to finally get the car listed. We gotta get it clean and so on and so forth. We go back to the Dollar Tree parking lot to get the car. And we walk in the parking lot and the car is not there, right? The car is gone, it's missing. Would you believe me if I told you that our car just got towed? You wouldn't believe me, right? You probably wouldn't believe me, but That's crazy. That's the spot where we was at. Oh, How long ago was it? Yeah, we saw that car too. That's crazy. Yeah. So you gotta talk to the manager. That's crazy. Talk to the where, did, where did they bring it to? Huh? You, you know I don't know. <laughs> bro that's crazy so immediately i knew what happened because as we left the parking lot i remember seeing somebody get their car towed and i just thought it was very strange because i'm like dang there's no boot on that car so how did they know to tow that car like what made them just pull up out of nowhere see that car and tow it I mean, they had stuff in the car, so I was just like, wow, that's crazy. So I knew immediately that our car got towed. And I'm just thinking to myself, what are the odds that right after we get a booking, immediately after we get a booking, the car gets towed? And I just start thinking to myself, how many things can go wrong in my life that I have no control over? Like these are these are things that you have to look at and go. Am I doing something wrong? Why does this keep happening? You think about the Airbnb situation with Philadelphia, then with my parents, with my bike, or my parent, with my, my, my aunt, my bike breaking down all the time. You think about just losing out on all the wholesale deals. There's a lot of things that happen that just are just random things that happen. Bad random things. This is another one. So now we're in the parking lot like, yo, how and mind you, it's Sunday, so I never had my car towed because I've never had a car. So I do not even know what to do in situations like this. So I'm like, are they gonna even be open today? Can we get the car back on a Sunday? Where do we have to go to get the car? How far is it? Are we gonna have to pay to get the car and go all the way over there? I have no idea what they're gonna ask us for, right? So we're walking through the parking lot. We go back and we go inside to the lady because one of the person that we asked outside said to ask the manager in the store about the car. So we're in a store and the lady gonna ask us, do we have any parking tickets? And I'm like, first of all, mind your business because we do have parking tickets, but that, that don't mean that's why the car got towed, all right? Your job is to come up. If you, here's my thing with her, right? This lady knows damn well that the sign outside says, if you park here and leave the parking lot, you will get your car towed. Now we didn't see this sign, right? But she knew damn well the sign was out there. She probably knows a lot of people that got their car towed. Now, why would her first question be, yeah, parking tickets? Right? This kind of this kind of shit that you be looking at, you like, you gotta look side eyed at people like just because I have parking tickets, because you're right, I do have parking tickets, like six or seven of them. That does not mean that's why the car got towed. But I I move on. So as I said, we outside and we read the sign. And this is one of the reasons why. Melissa wants to leave the hood. There are a lot of things that happen in the hood because it's a very crab in the barrel mentality. And then you have people trying to profit off of people in the hood. Things like, for example, I think Melissa brought this up before on the podcast. She tried to get her phone um, to buy a new phone at T-Mobile. In Manhattan, they were like, yeah, listen, change the phone, uh, put the SIM card in, transfer all the data off your phone and bring it back to us tomorrow. You go home, do that, come back, right? In the hood, they're like, so you're going to sit right here and you're going to be here for two and a half hours. How long you have to be here to transfer that stuff off? Then, once you transfer it, we'll give you the new phone, right? 
I try to deposit money in a bank or withdraw money from my own bank account, I get holds. Imagine you deposit money to your account and they're like, well, we know you deposited it from your own account or you have a check. They put in holds on the account, right? Then on top of that, it was a hassle to even open up the bank account. It was just hassles all over the place. So then you see a parking lot, right? This parking lot says you cannot park. It's a private parking lot attached to a Dollar Tree. They say you cannot park here for any reason at all, right? Then they say if you leave the parking lot for any reason, no, let me let me rephrase that. You can only park in this spot or in this parking lot if you're going to Dollar Tree. But if you are to leave for any reason, for any length of time, you will be told expeditiously. Okay? Now, you would think like, what kind of craziness is this? Now, I understand rules and law, and I feel like circumstances like that should apply to situations where the parking lot is full or it's very close to being full and you want people who are shopping at Dollar Tree to be able to shop there and park in the parking lot because I'm, I'm pretty sure that Dollar Tree pays some type of fee to have that parking lot there some type of uh, relationship they have with that parking company that parking lot company but if the parking lot is it just spaces all throughout the parking lot and then you're looking around to find somebody to tow that gives me very slimy vibes and my opinion was they had somebody sitting there waiting because we weren't we went to Home Depot across the street to get the lockbox and the car was towed so we go and Melissa calls the person and they say, hey, were you the person in the orange shirt? Now, to me, I still don't know why they ask this question, because that means one of two things. Either the person that we told that she told that told the car saw her leave the parking lot or somebody called her. Somebody, somebody who called them said, hey, listen, this girl in the orange shirt just left the parking lot right now. Tow her cars right there. Get that one right. Craziness. Y'all couldn't say nothing to me. Bro, craziness. Bro, they could have. They could have been like, Miss, you cannot leave the parking lot. If you if you do, we're gonna tow your car. Nothing. They're like, we gonna get you, bitch. If you leave this parking lot, we taking your shit and we going out of here. Right? Craziness. So, so now, they say they want a hundred and forty dollars for the car to get to be brought back and it has to be in cash. So we walk to the bank. Melissa goes, takes money out of her account, brings it back, and. Now it's like, okay, we give the money to them in cash. F they brought the car back in like f five minutes. By the time it took us to walk to the bank and come back, they were already there with the car, which means they didn't get far. And the lady that we talked to in the parking lot told us, yeah, man, they, your car just got towed like six minutes ago. So <laughs> they ain't even that far away. So now I'm, I'm just, I'm upset. And I, I think about those moments, right? Where I would watch TV. And I would see TV shows of, I think her name was Big Bertha. And she would get into fights. And I understand why people want to fight towers or whatever they're called. Because I felt so much rage in my chest. I wanted to spit on a person. I just was so, I was just so mad. I'm like, what kind of person are you that you literally see us walk out the parking lot, don't say nothing, and then call your brother left. Come on, go, come on, go, go, go. And then take the car. Like, it's craziness, right? M mind you, we shopped in Dollar Tree. We were in Dollar Tree, bought stuff, and came out. So we get the car back, right? So now I'm livid. So finally, uh, we drive and we, we get the car, it's in a parking spot. Now, I am still annoyed, right? And I'm being, I'm, I would say I'm being petty. I would say I'm being petty and, and slightly ignorant. I would say definitely those two things. I wouldn't say petty. I would say more so ignorant. And the reason I say this is because I'm like, yo, who was sitting around here pointing out that we left the parking lot? Right? So I'm recording people. Like, I think it was him. I think he said it. Nah, I don't know. Because he people just standing there just looking at us. So I'm like, nah, you know, it was you. You were the one that got us told, right? So I'm doing that. And then there's one guy walking back and forth, right? Smoking weed on the corner, walking back and forth with the box. So I'm like, oh, it's definitely him. He's the one, right? So now I'm sitting in a car. I give him a, I, you know, I see him. So now I'm recording the video. I put the video up here. You can see that too. Um, and I'm giving him head nods like, yo, it was good, bro. Like, I see you. I know it was you that was fucking snitching. Right? I'm giving him head like, yo, waving at him. Right? This ignorant, stupid shit. That things that uh, get you into 
situations that you don't want to be in, right? But I'm upset. I'm annoyed. I don't care. Which is a lot of people how people end up in jail or dead. So now uh, I'm giving him head nods like, yo, I see you. And he's not, he's not giving me no head nods back. So I keep giving him head nod and he looks away. So I'm like, oh yeah, it's definitely him, right? So I'm like, all right, best. So I put my phone down after I recorded, right? And I hear, yo, you recorded me? Right? So I'm like, what the? F I'm like, what the? F I don't even know where he came from. He was across, mind you, we're to, it's four lanes. He's across the streets. I didn't see him leave the corner to come over to the car, right? So I'm like, I'm recording because our car just got uh, uh, towed. Another person that was here. Yo, you recording me, yo? I'm recording this sign. We got our car towed oh, over here man. in the parking lot. So I was just so annoyed by that whole situation that happened but i digress so we finally get the car still traumatized by the car being towed and we go on about our day to get the car ready for the next day we decided to get the car cleaned you know the booking is at 4 p.m and we figured we have enough time to get there well i was wrong because the guy who was cleaning the car, we decided to get a hand wash now because the last time we got a car at the, the machine or whatever, they scratched the car a couple of times. So the guy tells me it's going to be two hours to hand clean the car. At that current time, it was 12 o'clock. The booking's at four. It's an hour. It's about. It's supposed to be a 30 to 45 minute drive to where we have to drop the car off at. This guy takes two and a half to almost two hours and 45 minutes. So now we're running late to get to our first booking, right? And I'm stressed. I'm like, Bro, why the fuck did he take so long? So we got to drive all the way to where the car is. That's an hour and change now to get there because there's traffic. On the way over there, the lady who is currently going to rent the car says to us that she's going to be late. So I'm excited. I'm like, oh, I'm so happy. She's going to be late. So now we have time to get the car ready and set up because we wanted to set up all the amenities that we bought with the water, the hand sanitizer, the Skittles, the car wipes, and the mask, right? I also wanted to change the license plate because right now it was attached by zip ties. I wanted to put the actual plate holder on. This whole interaction went completely left and we got there. We had to get gas. She ended up coming to meet us and that wasn't supposed to be what happened. It was supposed to be a contactless drop off. We weren't supposed to be there. As I was there, I was trying to change the license plate with the one I had wasn't able to go on the car. I already cut the zip ties off the car so now we have no way of putting it on so now i'm running around the the area i'm running to different stores running to hotel buildings i'm asking anybody for zip ties i'm like do you have zip ties string i'm going to restaurants nobody has anything you don't have no string no zip ties nothing so i finally go into this hotel lobby and the guy gives me rubber bands so he gave me like four rubber bands and he was like hey man do you think a paperclip would work? And I'm like, bro, give me that too. Give me anything you got that can hold stuff up and I'll take that. So he gave me three rubber bands, a paperclip, and I don't think he gave me strength. I think that's all he gave me. So I run back over to the car. I'm trying to put the stuff on the car before the lady comes because now she calls and says, hey, I'm down the block. Where's the car? The lady walks over as I'm kneeling or more or less uh, uh, crouching down. My butt cheeks are hanging out of my pants because y'all know. I'm fat now. So now like a plumber. Cheeks hanging out in my pants. And the whole interaction, in my opinion, just went wrong. So now we're standing there. We're watching her open the lockbox. We didn't get no pictures of the car for Turo. We didn't get to actually like check the car thoroughly, make sure they was ready to even give to her. And in my I was so stressed after that. I was so stressed because I felt like finally got the opportunity to start the business the way I wanted to, and then it ends up like this. So we get the car back on the 31st and I'll keep everybody updated as to what happens with that. I think we we made a good decision uh, with going with Toro. I think that I hope for the next couple of weeks and months that we also continue to get more bookings. And if anything, hopefully we can get five stars from this review and from this trip and raise our price going forward and get to that $100 mark. Um, but that is 
that is it for that topic of the day. I will move on to the rest of my topics. Last week, before we even got to drop the car roll, we went to Philadelphia to check on the house because I wanted to get some pictures and some videos of the house before it's actually finished. They started doing a framing and that was the whole reason we talked about in the last podcast about getting funding to be able to, con to continue the renovation. So the framing is more or less done. Uh, we, they would just have to frame the bathroom and the house in the back, I believe is all that's left. Now, as I was there, I was able to finally explain to my contractor what I meant by reimbursement because it seems like he still doesn't understand or didn't understand why I wanted to get the money back or why I wanted to have him do his job quicker and then the bank will reimburse me. So successfully, I was able to explain to him what that process is and he told me that he will be able to have the electric done before the end of the month. Now I have to follow up on that because it's about to be a week and a couple of days, maybe like two days. And we need to have electric done. We need to have plumbing done and if, and probably windows put on and the back wall honestly fixed. The reason why is because we are carrying very expensive debt. And as I was thinking about it today, that loan is crazy to me. Like it's an insane loan because they charge us every day and technically that's either you can call it a tax or you can call it inflation but normally if you have more time to utilize the money then before you have to pay it back you actually get ten thousand dollars so we don't even really have ten thousand dollars because every day that they take money from us is eight dollars another that we take take another eighty dollars they take another eighty dollars right every single day they charge eighty dollars so then not only do they charge $80 every day on the loan, they also are charging us about another $4,000 in interest that we have to pay back over the span of the loan term. So I just think it's crazy that we're getting hit twice. It would be different if they said, okay, we'll give you the $10,000 and you'll pay us back. You could pay us back, um, let's say it was 80 times, like $1,600 I think we have to pay back. If we paid back the 1600 at the end of the month, we could finesse throughout the month, but every day we don't actually have the $10,000. And not only that, once we pay out the $10,000, we still would owe them another $4,000. So I think it's crazy. Uh, a cra it's a crazy loan. But, and I would not, uh, here's the thing too. I don't want to say I would not recommend it to other people because if you think or you have a plan on how to utilize it, then go for it but it's very very risky and the only reason why we took this loan out is because we're getting reimbursed from the lender now that's all contingent on if the contractor is able to perform the task before the end of the month and the reason why i say the end of the month is because we took money off our credit cards to fund this renovation so those payments are we have well those payments are due at the beginning of November. So once they reimburse us for that money, then we can pay off our payments for our credit cards. That's the plan. So if we're, if, we're, if for whatever reason, they don't get that stuff done and we aren't reimbursed, then we will have a weird situation at the end of the month when it comes down to, eh, that's not true actually. No, it's actually a good plan. We, I was going to say we were going to have a weird situation because we now have to come up with the money to pay off the credit card, which honestly, plus the house loan, is like $4,000 for, the, for, the, for like the first week of the month. It's about $4,000 we have to pay. And that's just credit card. That's not food. That's not subscriptions. That's not car stuff. That's just credit cards and loans four thousand dollars the first week of the month so you know um so i'm gonna try hitting up this week and hopefully i get some pictures and video i can show post on my instagram and we can see what the house looks like going forward uh 
there are two eh, three more things for a life update that i want to get to y'all know i've uh started off wholesaling that's not true y'all know that i was wholesaling and i started doing off-market wholesaling and i actually was doing some cold calling using phone burner which is very expensive and deal machine which is also kind of expensive and i found a lead one person said they would sell their house in several months from now um but i got some information from uh emilio he said that he runs into that a lot so i'm actually curious to see how much weight i should even put on that one but i also have another person who has a very messy situation he's not in the state but he owns a house here and he seems like he wants to sell it because he keeps calling me back to sell the house but when he will call me back and then tell me to call somebody else about the house he told me to call his lender about the house he also told me that he has a brother here that manages the house and then he has somebody else that knows about that it's a lot of people that he told me to talk to but he keeps calling me back about hey man what's going on with the update so i have to figure out what to do with that house because it's a duplex and i'm pretty sure i can get the entire duplex for like 500 to maybe like 550,000. And the issue with the duplex is that it's occupied. Duplexes in that area are going for 800, 900, a million dollars. So if I can wholesale this, I can get an e, I can probably clear an easy 30 to $50,000. It's just about the tenants that are there. So if there was a way to get them out the house or if the rents were better because right now the rents are very, very low. They're like $1,800 a month and the rent should be like $2,500. So the rents are super low. Um, but I'm a, I am got to get back to cold calling because now that we had these two weeks off for the, without having a car, because even though the car was a blessing, it was a curse in disguise because it gave us access to move around a lot. And I think that because we were able to move around so freely and easily, we were putting off things that we should have been doing every day. And that's one of the topics I have, not topics, but one of the life updates that I have is that I need to start saying no to more things because I realized that I lost out on a lot of things I was supposed to do and get done in the last two weeks because I kept going out, doing things, having phone calls and things of that, of that nature. And I find it funny because years ago, I remember that I was very stringent on not saying yes to things and always saying no, not going out, not getting on the phone, telling people, look, I'm not talking to you or not answering the phone. And it's weird because I've internalized the ability to do it, but I forget that it is something that has to be done all the time. You don't just do it for a year or two years or three years. It has to be who I become going forward. And I actually forgot that. I'm like, oh, I know how to do that. I've done it before. But then I don't do it now. So I'll wait, spend money or waste money going out. I'll be on the phone for too long. i uh, waste time going out. And things that are very important are not getting done. But the positive trade-off to that is that it does help with my mood. And that's where it becomes a balancing act of how uncomfortable do I want to be to get the things done so that in the long term, I can be more comfortable. So that is something I'm going to work on going forward is trying to focus on what needs to be done, no matter who else doesn't like that is going on. And the last thing for the uh, life update is I watched the new Diera video. And it was trending again, which again, I always think is kind of strange that it trends, but I don't know what they do that makes videos trend. I don't know how they choose the videos that trend, but according to this guy I watched, he said that the videos that trend and are on those pages are the videos that YouTube likes, not necessarily videos that we the people want to see. So I think in that video, she was more of herself or at least more of what she normally posts on her channel. One of those blog site channels or whatever had said that her girlfriend was at the in the video with her they had somebody had like spotted a slipper on the floor and was like oh whose slipper is that somebody's in the house with her right so i didn't see this until after the video but i'm wondering if that's why she felt more comfortable in the video the first video she shot she seemed very awkward it seemed very forced it also could have been that she was nervous because it's her first video in a long time i don't know 
I just know that the last video she posted seemed like it was more natural to who she has presented herself to be on social media. But that is it for the life update. I'm moving on to the episode playback. Now, in episode playback, I was saying dehumanized and I feel like a better term would have been not better, but I was trying to say demonized. They kind of fall together in the same category, but I feel like what happens is people get demonized first and want to become demonized, then they get dehumanized. So I think that that's what's going to happen with a lot of people who don't want to get stabbed. Um, then we were trying to figure out who we think will be next, the next group of people that will be demonized, you know, to feel uncomfortable and to feel isolated and segregated. Melissa last week has said teachers. And then funny enough, we end up seeing an article uh, where it said that teachers are, what did it say? They're, they're not going to work. What was it? There's a teacher shortage. Oh, there's a teacher shortage. That was that's what we saw, right? Now I was thinking about this too. I think that the next people to be demonized or a group of people that will be demonized will be people that don't have enough shots or don't get enough of the vaccine or don't get the third booster shot. I think it'll get to a point where people who have vaccines will be like, but you only have one, you don't have two? Bro, you're bugging. You get the booster shot? Oh my God, bro, I can't be around you, bro. You don't have the booster shot. And I think that'll happen. I think we'll have a segregation where people are arguing with each other about how how much of how vaccinated they actually are. It's not about being vaccinated or unvaccinated. It's going to be about how much vaccinations have you got, which I think I guess it's going to just be crazy. The reason why I think that there will be segregation between all the different groups is because. It comes down to people arguing with each other. That's more or less what the whole idea of this place is run on is you like that thing. I don't like that thing. Now nah, we don't like each other because we both dislike. We both don't like that thing or we both like it or whatever the case might be. And it's a very profitable ideology. But in terms of your sanity and I feel like in terms of honestly your morality and how you view other people, it's not very beneficial to look at people like that as one way or the other. And I think the signs of those things will always be when somebody gets a name. When a person that does a thing is now a name because you're not a person that does not get the vaccine. You are not a person that did not get the vaccine. You are an anti-vaxxer or you are the unvaccinated. Right. And now when I put a name on you, now that I can I have a target I can hit. I go, OK, you did not get the vaccine. So you are now unvaccinated or you are now an anti-vaxxer. So now when I put on a screen, I can say. The reason why everybody is sick is because of the anti-vaxxers or the unvaccinated. And now it allows other people to get upset about these labels on these people. So that's why I think that's going to come to a point where they just segregate the vaccinated against each other. Where it's going to be like you have one shot and two shots. You don't have three shots. Your shot was six months ago. It wasn't three months in. You took too long to get your last shot. You know, but. I also, uh, I need to slow down my last episode. I think this one, I was able to talk slower and I, th I would hope that it still came across as, I would not say energetic, but it's still something that is palatable and can be listened to. Um, I don't think I have to be hype all the time, but I do think that my tone should not be the same throughout the whole thing that I'm saying. So that's something else that I've been uh, trying to work on. And I've realized as I'm saying this, I think for episode playback, my tone becomes more monotone because there's no storyline. That's what I think happens. Um, and I feel like last week I was talking way too fast, not way too fast. I just think that listening to it sounds a lot better if I'm not playing it on my headphones 
and I'm listening to it from my laptop or like out loud. I don't know what that causes that. Maybe it's the sound settings that do that, but it sounded better to me like that. And I just feel like the first 10 minutes of it was just fast. Like it was just, it was just too fast. Um, so that's something I'm still working on getting down, but it's not like it was before. I'm pretty sure my old episodes from probably like episode 27 or 29. And there's actually episode where I thought it was kind of funny. It was episode where I got into a, a argument. I wouldn't even call it an argument with this lady at Popeye's because I believe I wasn't wearing a mask. This was like last year when people were even more afraid of the vac of the pandemic. And she started throwing straws at me in Popeye's. So I snatched her glasses off her head and it was just, it was a whole thing. It was just, it was just stupid. It was the whole thing was just dumb because I'm like, you shouldn't be touching me about like You shouldn't be pushing me, touching me, your old lady. You could get hit. Like it's just ridiculous. She was white. So, but I remember that, that video was very animated through that video, but I've been trying to be less, uh, I've been trying to talk slower. I think I was able to achieve that through the Turo situation. And I decided to stop saying the percentage during screen time because I it sounds very analytical to say, yeah, man, we were down 70% from last week. Where it's like, as I said it to myself, as I was listening, it just went over my head. Like, okay, I don't know what you were at last week. I don't know 70% from that is. Why don't you just tell me what you're at now? Why are you telling me you're down 8%? Like, this is not the stock market. So I decided to stop saying that. Um, and I also had to slow down for the screen time. I feel as though it's very valuable, but I don't think that I am communicating it properly or serving it properly. I would say that. And then the last thing for that, well, one, two things. It's the it's the freaking swallowing. I'm like, I wasn't sure why I was swallowing so much. Not swallowing a lot, but it's very loud on the camera, on the mic. So I went to look it up because I'm thinking to myself, why? And it sounds so bad. It just sounds really bad to me when I swallow and I hear it on the mic. So what it says, or this article I found, it says the human nose is for breathing and smell while the mouth is for chewing swallowing and talking but if the nose isn't functioning properly probably due to a blockage people tend to breathe with their mouth so nasal congestion is another factor that can cause people to swallow so loud if your noise noise hmm, if your nose were congested you would start breathing and eating with your mouth that's what literally happens so i was thinking that because it could be the cats but i also have this idea that i have I had COVID in the past and it caused me to uh, like have long lasting inflammation in my nose. And I feel like it could be my old cat. It could be the cats we have now, but I, and it could be cause I'm, you know, fat. So all those things combined, I think make it sound, make it sound excessive when I swallow and less contraction. That's the last thing I want to touch on. So now we're going to the topics of the day. This uh, topic of the day is oh before i continue actually i think that even if you hate anti-vaxxers even if you hate unvaccinated people mind you putting quotes around these for the people that like to name them that um i think it's important that those people still hear this because Um, I think we're getting to a point where it's starting to become ridiculous what's happening in terms of what people are able to do who are vaccinated, who have been vaccinated and people who have not been vaccinated. I was actually watching this video yesterday. Now, I'm curious, Melissa, have you heard about Australia at all? Mm, I feel like I overheard what you were watching. Okay, so uh, in Australia... If I'm not mistaken, they have banned guns. This is years ago. I don't know how many years, maybe decades ago at this point. And up to this point, everybody was saying we should be more like Australia. 
We need to be like Australia. They don't have any mass shootings. They need to, uh, we need to adopt their same ideologies, right? A lot of people here always say, well, why do I need a gun? I don't need a gun. If, if I do have a gun, I don't need an AK-47 or an automatic weapon. And we always look to places like Australia as the pinnacle for what gun laws should look like, right? And the argument against this was always the reason why people have guns is to protect themselves from neighbors, robbers, and the government. This was the reasons why people had guns. Now, I bring this up because in Australia, people are getting beaten in the streets, like with batons, people are being hospitalized, people are getting tear gassed, people are getting uh, hit with rubber bullets. And the reason why all these things are happening is because they are fighting for what they deem to be their rights and against the vaccine mandates, right? Now, I find it interesting because I don't see a lot of it on social media. Um, I saw this video on YouTube that I found about it and I actually saw another video where a guy was actually from Australia and he was saying that the scenario in which he was talking at that forum is not allowed in Australia in terms of they were sitting in a room or a large area and they were talking to the guy on the stage, the panelist. And he had to laugh because he was like, no, we could never do this in Australia. Like we couldn't. And there's a, a specific, uh, I don't know if it's a state or city, how they call it over there, that you're not allowed to gather at all. Right. And there are people who are getting, there's multiple countries that are like this now. There are people who are getting tickets for taking their trash out after curfew, right? There are kids who are getting, I don't know if they're getting arrested. They might be also getting a ticket for being outside after curfew. Not like adults, kids are getting in trouble for this, right? Because of the vaccine mandates. So I know a lot of people, I actually have family members that I have talked to and they are for vaccine mandates. Now, the reason why I'm opposed to it is because I feel like it is an infringement on freedom, right? And I try not to say words like that because a lot of people dismiss it because it sounds like freedom fighters or something from the past that, you know, nobody wants to deal with. They go, oh my God, he said he wants freedom. Oh my God, what do you mean you want freedom? It's just, you can't go to the, to the store. Oh my God, you can't go to the movie theater, bro. It's not that serious, right? And people compare what's going on now to slavery. People compare it to the Holocaust. People compare it to um, usually, uh, what would they call it? Totalitarianism or dictatorship. People compare it to those type of infrastructures. And again, like I said, it's when I say these words, they're trigger words for people because it instantly makes them shut off. It instantly makes them go, oh, here we go again with this, right? So, a lot of people who talk about the past in terms of slavery, most people in my generation, I'm a, a I'm a, what am I, millennial? I'm a millennial, right? I was born in 1994. I think I'm a millennial. I think that's what they call me. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm a millennial, right? And I always find it funny because a lot of people always talk about what they would have done back in slavery. You watch movies on TV and you go, oh my God, that's crazy. I would never have let that happen. How could you, what you mean you could, you telling me you was a slave and uh, Harriet Tubman came by to get you and you said, nah, bro, I want to stay here. And there's a famous quote that she has by her about how many people she could have saved if they knew they were slaves, Right? Now, that is a metaphor for what's happening now. And the reason I say it's a metaphor because I don't think that 
we are slaves and I don't want to get conflated to the fact that what we're going through now is even in any way close to slavery because it's not on any barometer or any scale at all. But what I do want people to make the connection to is that the majority of atrocities that have happened are usually not demonstrative. They're usually not somebody comes in and just starts attacking you in your house, dragging you out of your home. It, that's not usually how it starts. You have situations like the Holocaust. Now, there's another one that people, as soon as you hear that word, everybody goes, oh, here we go again. Another, here we go again. He used the H word. I can't hear him no more because the H word came out of his mouth. I think that's the most important example to use because of how methodical the decisions that were made were. It all started off with making somebody else look like they were negatively affecting you, right? You have the people who are going, you have to go and live in that part of the city. You have to now wear this uh, armband. You have to only eat at these places, things like that, right? Actually, I just watched a video recently about Jerry Springer. I don't know if people knew this, that he's Jewish. And he said that his parents survived the Holocaust. He was saying that they left, I believe it was Poland, the weekend or the week before Hitler closed the gates that people ended up getting incinerated and abused and tortured and killed. They left a week before that, right? So the reason I bring all of this up is because I just want people to see that it does not start off with ridiculous atrocities, right? It starts off with very small inconveniences is what I would say. Very, very small inconveniences. Another issue that people have is that they go, well, what should I do? Should I go out? and run in the streets should i go and do a sit-in like martin luther king should i go and uh attack people who are uh making these laws and i say i would say you do whatever you want to do right but what i act that you don't do is that push the idea of separating someone because they got vaccinated someone that they did not get vaccinated i also don't want people to feel like it's okay for the, here comes another word's going to trigger people, the government to be able to mandate these freedoms that people have, right? I realized that our generation has never actually had to fight for things that we want or fight for freedom. That's not something that we ever had to deal with. So we don't even know what that comes with. We have, we have never in our generation have we really had to fight for something that we want. So I don't even believe that people today know how to do that or have the internal makeup to do so. I feel like if something got too crazy, people would just tap out and go, nah, I can't deal with this, which I think is part of how it's supposed to be. If you ask yourself, could you sit at a table while getting spit on and beat for something that you believe in? I don't know what you believe in. I don't know something that you feel like you stand by. But what is it that you say, okay, I'm willing to die for this? Do you have anything like that? Is there something that you feel like, they, I, I have my line here, I'm not crossing that line? A lot of people now don't have that. Back in the day, you could look at somebody wrong and that was the line for them, right? So when you have that line back in the day, if you look at me wrong, that's a problem. There is not going to, it's going to be very hard to get from you looked at me funny to I can't go into this store. It's, it's like, what you mean? I can't, you going to stop me from going in the store. That's not going to happen. So I feel like in today's day and age for a lot of people who don't have the, the, the will to go out and, you know, preach on the street or fight somebody or what they believe in. In situations like this mandate that they have it's not about if you have the vaccine or not it's not about that because if it was about that i say this on every other podcast people who have the vaccine can still catch covid one you can still die from covid 
two. And you can still transmit COVID to somebody else. Those are three things that you are trying to avoid by getting COVID in the first place. And every single one of those things that you are trying to get can still happen to you. So I'm gonna end the podcast on that quote. We'll be back here next Tuesday. You can find all the behind the scenes content on our social medias. Mine is Donovan Gray, D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y and my phenomenal, beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne. A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. You know what it is. Hashtag Bamboo Project 2021. We going up all year. You know the vibes. And with that being said, Bamboo Project out.